This is the third video in a series of videos about complex arithmetic, both the algebraic methods and the geometric interpretations. In the last video, we looked at uh, defining something called the complex plane as a way of representing complex numbers. And the, co the example we were thinking about was taking the complex number 3 plus 6i and adding the complex number 4 plus 5i to get 7 plus 11i. Down here in this picture, the real part of the each complex number is plotted along the horizontal axis labeled with the real axis, and the imaginary part of each complex number is plotted based on a vertical axis which we label with the word imaginary and we call it the imaginary axis. This is called the complex plane and we imagine these dots as representing those complex numbers in this complex plane. Um, so what we have here, for example, is this dot at whose coordinates are 3 comma 6 represents the complex number 3 plus 6i. This dot whose coordinates are 4 comma 5 represents the complex number 4 plus 5i. This dot up here whose coordinates are 7 11, take a moment to look at that, represents the complex number 7 plus 5i and this dot right here at the origin whose coordinates are 0 0 represents the complex number 0 plus 0i which is the same as the real number 0. Any, no, any dot that is along the real axis really is a real number. It is the additive identity 0 plus 0i added to any other complex number is that other complex number. And what we noted was that this forms, these dots seem to form a parallelogram if you connect them with straight line segments. In this video I'd like to um, quickly show you some Mathematica code that will allow us to see this a little bit more explicitly. I'm going to go pretty fast, so you may want to take notes or pause the video often and try this on your own. First of all, I copied and pasted this code down here. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to take the output of this list plot and combine it with um, another command that's going to create other kinds of output. And the way you can combine different kinds of uh, Mathematica command that create different kinds of graphical output is with something called show a command called show. I'm embedding this list plot within a show command. There I've got show and the initial bracket for show and here's the ending bracket for show. This list plot is embedded in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to combine this with another Mathe command, Mathematica command that's going to generate graphical output. It's graphics. Here's the basic syntax, graphics, square brackets. I'm going to put some stuff inside here. Graphics can create lots of different kinds of graphics. We can use it to create circles and rectangles. I'm going to use it to create uh, line segments. And I'm going to make these line segments a certain color. First, I'm going to create curly braces here. And I'm going to put as a first option the color red. Then I'm going to put a comma. <clears throat> What am I going to color red? I'm going to color a line red. What line is it? Well, it's a line that's going to start at the point 0, 0 and end at the point 3, 6. Notice the syntax here. There's the line part. I've embedded a list within line that consists of two sublists that are representing points. 0, 0 is the origin. 3, 6 is the point 3, 6. I'm going to get a line segment going between those two points. It's going to be added to the graph because I'm embedding this within a show. There we go. We see that line segment between 0, 0 and 3, 6 was added to this graph. I can continue adding more line segments and in fact I can just modify what I've got already. I can go back up here and put a comma and then put 7, 11. That will now continue the line segments to the point 7, 11. So now I've got two line segments, one going from 0, 0 to 3, 6, the other going from 3, 6 to 7, 11. I'm going to continue. I'll go back down to the point 4, 5. Now we add a third line segment. And finally, I'll go to the origin, 0, 0, as my fourth line segment. So there we can see the parallelogram uh, that these four points make. and as long as the two numbers you're adding are not in the same line through the origin, you will always get a parallelogram when you add two complex numbers that's in this type of form. You can connect the dots in this way and you'll get a parallelogram. Let me also talk a little bit about vectors. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to have time to really get into it as 
fully as I'd like, but this will be at least a little introduction. I'll go back to this initial picture that I had, and so we have the four dots there. Again, we've got the origin that represents the complex number zero, zero plus zero i, if you will. You've got these two dots representing three plus six i up there and four plus five i there, and you've got their sum, seven plus eleven i up here, and then we've got this first line segment. I went back to this original example right there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this word line to the word arrow. And instead of having a line segment between 0, 0, and 3, 6, we're going to have an arrow starting at the point 0, 0 and ending at the point 3, 6. There, I entered it. It changed into an arrow instead of a, um, a line. Maybe I'll change the color to blue to emphasize to see the arrow better. All right. So there we have an arrow. Arrows like this can be thought of as what are called vectors in math and science. And um, when you look at a vector like this, the, there's an important thing to realize here. It's got a certain length and a certain direction. The length of this vector, the length of this arrow, could be found by using the Pythagorean theorem. For example, you could draw a perpendicular from the tip of the arrow down to the real axis here, making a right angle right there and use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the length of the arrow. Uh, I guess it would be the square root of uh, 45. 3 squared is 9, 6 squared is 36. Yes, yeah, square root of 45 is going to be the length of that, that arrow. And you could also figure out the angle here by using some trigonometry. I guess the arctangent or inverse tangent of uh, 6 over 3, which would be the arctangent of 2, would be the angle right there. That, again, it's got a certain length and a certain direction. I could translate this arrow to another spot. For example, I could base it at this point here, the point 4, 5, and end it at the point 7, 11, and it would be the same length and the same direction. Let me do that by just doing a little copying and pasting here. And then modifying. So I copied and pasted that and put a comma in between. It's very important to put that comma there. I'm going to start the arrow at the point 4, 5 this time and end the arrow at the point 7, 11. There we go. That arrow is the same length and the same direction as this arrow down here. They are, of course, different arrows because they're in different spots, but they are, in a sense, equivalent. And because of that, you want to think of them as being the same vector. The key thing with vectors is they have a certain length and a certain direction. Vectors are often called signed, uh, they're often called, thought of as magnitudes. Um, that have both, well, they have a magnitude and they have a direction. Quantities that have a length and a direction. Magnitude is, is equivalent to length. When you do complex analysis, another word for magnitude or length is modulus. And the angle here is sometimes called the argument of the complex numbers. We can think of these arrows actually as representing a complex number. And in fact, they would rep both represent the complex number 3 plus 6i. So there's more than one way of representing a complex number. The, the complex number 3 plus 6i could be thought of as just this red dot right there, or it could be thought of as this arrow, because this arrow has a horizontal displacement of 3 and a vertical displacement of 6. The arrow itself could be thought of as the complex number 3 plus 6i, and I can put it anywhere I want. Both of these arrows could be thought of as that same complex number, 3 plus 6i. What about the other one, 4 plus 5i? A little bit more copy and paste magic here, as long as I don't make a mistake. Let's see. Uh, I think that's good. Okay. Let's change this 3, 6 to 4, 5. There we go. Now I've got an arrow going from the origin to the point 4, 5. It can be thought of as representing the complex number 4 plus 5i. I could also take that and started at the point 3, 6 and ended at the point 7, 11. And it's going to be the same length and same direction. Both of those complex numbers can be thought of as representing the complex number 4 plus 5i. And so the parallelogram becomes sort of a directed parallelogram with these arrows in here. I'm going to add a final arrow in here, a final vector starting at the point 0, 0 and going to the point 7, 11, right there. Now, I'm at about the 10-minute mark here, so I'm going to end this video. If you know about vector addition, 
you should understand what this picture means in terms of vector addition. If you don't know about vector addition, I'll talk about that in the next video, but I'll I'll end it right now. If you, I would also encourage you to um, to look it up, look up information about vector addition before watching the next video where I will talk about it.